Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go, Fantasy Football Sackos! Week one of the books. How are we doing? Episode 30, Alex? Did you go undefeated this weekend? How, how did your teams do? Uh, I am so frustrated that I'm red in the face. Uh, <laughs> Alex and, and that, Jason back for the fantasy football sackos. Alex that has nothing had a, to do with me playing golf today and no. not wearing sunscreen. How's and your short wearing game? My hat backwards. Uh, my short game is all I have. Really? How's your long game? Yeah. How are you off the tee? N- nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Oh, absolutely man. nothing. Yeah, week one's done. Um, it went okay. I lost on Saquon's last uh, catch tonight, which sucked. Um, I lost on injury. Can you lose on injury? Because I did. Because I had, uh, I had James Conner didn't go well tonight. Cortland Sutton didn't go well. Uh, Good news on James Conner though. They said it's not serious. I know we'll get to that, but he wasn't they're, needed. They're, he just wasn't needed. Yeah, they're saying he'll be back. They're optimistic he'll be back soon. Ugh. But he seems like a clay doll sometimes. Debo and hurt. I had Kittle. I mean, it's just injury central right here. Yeah, it sucks. Hey, at least you didn't have Marlon Mack. Ooh. We're going to get to that spicy meatball. All right. So everybody, uh, we have officially moved. Welcome to week two of the Fantasy Football Sackos. Same digs, different time slot. Uh, we are moving from Tuesday, or actually we're moving from Wednesday, Friday podcasts to Tuesday, Thursday podcasts. Uh, Tuesday is mainly going to be a weekend recap slash waiver show. And then our Thursday show is going to be like a weekend preview, what to watch for. And so with that, let's just dive in. Uh, talk to me Let's about do that. It. Talk to me about that Thursday night game with uh, Chiefs Texans. It was it was interesting, right? Because I was watching and I was like, "This game is going so fast," because both offenses were moving the ball and there was no penalties because there's no crowd noise for either team. And That's why there were no penalties. <laughs> well, <laughs> for me, I think that's part of it because like there's no. Yeah, because there's no offside penalties or there's a lot fewer offsides penalties than there have been in the past on the offense. I'll give you that. It almost seems like and it almost seems like the defense just in general has been jumping offsides more because, you know, they're clearly listening to hard counts. Sure. So for some reason, it just felt like offenses were better because there was no crowd and they were able to sustain drives better. It, that's just what it felt. That was just a general thing that I picked up on Thursday and it seemed to hold uh, on Sunday and even tonight. Um, the Steelers defense was great. Oh, um, talk so, about dominating. Yeah. So uh, back to Thursday night first. I, I guess the thing, you know, that we were looking for coming to this weekend was was what's going to happen with the Chiefs running backs between Clyde Edwards Hilaire um, and Daryl Williams. And Clyde was on the field for 67% of the plays. Daryl Williams was on the field for 33% of plays, uh, 46 plays to 23 plays. Um, and you're clearly not going to be able to get Clyde Edwards Hilaire now. Uh, but if Daryl Williams is available in your league, I think you have to go get him because I think he has value. Really? Uh, yeah, I do. Like he was on the field enough in that offense. And if he's going to get any catches and I, I know I think we both think that Clyde is going to fully take over that backfield and probably be playing 80% of the snaps by the end of the season. But at least Daryl's a a handcuff at worst. And I I just think that they might work him into the offense more because it was crazy. Like if, if the Texans defense was playing back, Mahomes was just going to turn around and give it to the running back. If the defense was playing forward, he was just going to throw it over their heads. And it, it, it was so methodical that, it just, you know, it just seemed like they were unstoppable. Um, Through the Sunday night games, Clyde Edwards Hilaire was the only running back in the entire league to have more than 100 yards rushing. So interesting. I well, am Bar- Barkley didn't have positive rushing yards. So I don't <laughs> think so. 
so I don't I don't think he did it. And <laughs> CEH had 25 for 138 in a tutty. And he had the the best part about his entire freaking stat line was his attempts in the red zone or his attempts like inside the five yard line. He had like six attempts or five attempts, which was yep. more attempts than the Jets had the last two years combined. <laughs> he had an, a game. <laughs> Good Lord. So uh, it, it should be noted. Benny Snell went over 100 yards tonight, so he would be the second running back. I'm not it, trying yeah. to talk about. Uh, we can we'll get into James Conner <laughs> in, in our waiver wired um, a, as far as guys that because this is also a waiver wire show. Uh, what we watched for on the Chiefs end of things was how Clyde Edwards, Hilaire and Daryl were splitting snaps. CEH, man, he had complete control of the backfield, like especially in the second half. He was the one taking himself out of the game and like waving in Daryl like, hey, I need a breather. I've been in for X amount of plays in a row. I need. Yeah, it's a really good sign. Yes, it's it's a really good sign if you own him. Yeah. And so I was already high on Clyde. Like if you landed Clyde, you have to be thrilled with that showing. If you picked up Daryl late, the only way that you're, I think, excited that you landed Daryl would be if you also had Clyde because then you have his backup. Um, I don't think he holds a lot of standalone value. I wouldn't recommend starting him. Um, no, not not for right now. But I think he, like, he's more of a stash than yeah. anything. I, the only other thing I would say on the chief side of the ball is Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins, Watkins is only owned. He's available in more than 50% of leagues. He's only owned in 46%. He had nine targets for seven catches, 82 yards, and a score. Like that's pretty good. Very usable. Um, First week Watkins, week one Watkins, man. Yeah. I mean, he had 40 some odd points last last season. Yeah. So if you are struggling at receiver, do you bid on Watkins? Do you think he's better than McCole Hardman? And. If you're struggling at receiver, you lose week one, you're struggling at receiver. How much fab do you put down on Watkins? Uh, So I am for sure a savior sauce guy when it comes to fab and waiver stuff. I know that week one. Even if you lose? Yeah. You're not going to chase the nine targets? No. Because we're targets, guys. we, We already did our homework. And so if your team consists of anybody that we've talked about when it comes to targets, like I, I get him being there, but I, you just can't. So what, let's say we're talking about $200 of fab. I don't, I don't think you're putting more than $10 on him. I, and I, I would even no. say that that's somewhat being aggressive. Like it, in that offense, they're going to spread it around so much. Because they're he's Mahomes is just gonna throw it to who's open. Like so that's five percent of your anything. fab budget. So five yeah, bucks I if think, you're on a hundred dollar budget, which is the default. Yeah, I think I I think that's on the high side. So I wouldn't go any more than that, personally. No, neither would I. I would probably honestly go less than that. I would bid like three bucks if you're on a hundred dollar budget, two to three, and that's really only if you lost. He's so inconsistent. You're going to have a lot of people that are afraid to bid on him at all. That I think a lot of people are just going to say, it's Sammy Watkins. It's a fluke. It's week one. I'm not even going to bother bidding on him. If I do, it'll be a zero bid. And I'm just going to play the waiver order. If they are like, yeah, do right. There's no the reason to above. not do the zero dollar bid. Yeah. Yeah. There's no like, reason not to do the zero bid. But so yeah, unless you're, I wouldn't waste actual money on him. I think if you put down even more than like two bucks, I think you're probably going to get him. Um, I would just say like one of the things is like not to overreact in week one because you learn so much about your team. And even like you didn't start the right guys. Like I didn't start a lot of the right guys in my league or in all of my leagues. And so you just you learn so much about all the various players um, and we'll get to a lot of them as we as we go over these teams and these matchups. Um, just try not to overreact and go too far the other way. 
So yeah, don't uh, don't overreact. Um, don't there, there's no need to chase things. So that, that, that's what we were looking for in the Chiefs uh, for the Texans. Uh, there I was looking go. at Brandon Cook's usage. Um, I, I talked him up as a um, as a potential top 15 guy this year. Uh, he's been a top 15 wide receiver for the last five years. Um, Will Fuller. So he he had the banged up. Yeah, he, he Cooks had the banged up quad. He came off the field. It seemed like most of the second half. Um, when the Texans were actually doing their doing their thing, so C- Cooks was on the field for thirty one of fifty nine snaps, fifty three percent of snaps. Um, Randall Cobb was on the field for seventy eight percent, and Will Fuller was on the field for eighty. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing for me. Um, but he he was dinged up. Um, so I I guess to like their offense just looked weird without Hopkins, and they were trying to figure out what David Johnson could do and. David Johnson looked great, but um, yeah, it was a little Hopkins disappointing. Hopkins looked great season, on Arizona's not give, offense, not giving too. Up yet. Sure did. <laughs> um, just, just a couple things to look forward to for next week. Um, the Chiefs are playing at the Chargers, the LA Chargers. I'm trying to, you know, so we're trying to figure out, is Sammy Watkins legit? And I want to keep seeing if that offense is just going to take what the defense gives them. And if that's the case, then I think I actually think that it does downgrade uh, Tyreek Hill a little bit because they're not just going to be throwing the ball up. It seemed like it was more of a more of a possession game and they were they were OK with just going short down the field. And Tyreek's like the the burner over the top. And that's why Sammy Watkins was was more successful because of the two wide receivers, he's more of a possession guy. And uh, same thing with Nicole Hardman to a certain extent where he's the burner. Um, so that's what I'm looking for with the Chiefs. Uh, for the Texans, what a terrible start, right? They they're at Kansas City and then home against Baltimore. Oh God, that's an awful two two games to start the season. Um, so is David Johnson legit? Um, you know, he did get dinged up already a little bit and was off the field for a little bit, and so did Duke Johnson. So it's just about trying to keep those guys healthy. But uh, for one week at least, they both looked, uh, or you know, David Johnson looked good. Duke Johnson was definitely a non-factor. Yeah, I, I think if you are um, a if you're a Pat Mahomes owner, maybe you're a little bit nervous because he only threw the ball 32 times. I think you might be expecting yeah. or hoping for a little bit more than that. Um, granted, he was highly efficient with it, but I mean, all all of the scuttle after the game was, well, should the Chiefs or should any Patrick Mahomes managers that have him on their fantasy rosters? be concerned that maybe Pat Mahomes isn't going to be chucking the ball all over the field all year because they have an efficient running game for the first time in a while. Um, So I guess there's maybe that's a semi concern. Um, Also on the opposite side of that, the Houston Texans will fuller with more than a 30% target share. That is the elite of the elite in terms of target share. Does that continue all season? Is that only because Brandon cooks is hurt? Um, if that, if that stays true, the guy's a fringe wide receiver one, like he's a top 15 guy. I think week in week out. I mean, that defense did not look intimidating at all, which I think could lead to some, you know, some positive game scripts where maybe Deshaun has to try to keep them in games or they have garbage time late. Like, Wolf Fuller did the vast majority of his damage late when they were down and he was dealing with a prevent defense. So if he's, if Fuller's dealing with 10 targets a game plus, I mean, that's, that's great news. So I just, yep. as excited as all Will Fuller owners have to be, you just need to take it with a grain of salt because again, cooks wasn't healthy. So, um, yep, I agree. Uh, Sunday morning, Jets and Bills in the. I, I apologize if anybody played the played the Jets defense. Just for the record of my uh, my streams that we we talked about last week, Ooh. you uh, they were bad. Um, so we we were looking for the for the Jets who steps up in the passing game, and clearly it was Jamison Money Crowder for uh, who who we talked up quite a bit um, in our preseason. Uh, Thirteen targets, uh, week one, which is a pace for two hundred and eight targets for the year. So uh, <laughs> good start there. Uh, Crazy, gotta, gotta like all that. Um, so, it, I mean, he was a sleeper. You, you were getting him in the eighth, ninth, tenth round, depending on the league, and um, he he showed up, which is 
absolutely great. Uh, by the time he finished the game, he had seven catches, 115 yards and a touchdown. So it um, is so good, fun good talking about there. like a guy or two all off season. And then they just come out and hit week one. And that's what Carter did. Yeah. Granted he, his yep. touchdown review, like might've been the slowest 50, 60 yard touchdown in history. However, he still made it. And that's what matters. <laughs> like, Count the, it, the, even the though he's, even though he's sitting on everybody's bench, right? But yeah, that's okay. I, yeah. Um. So n- next week the Jets have San Francisco at home. Um. Oh my God. Uh. Good. Good luck to Jets. Uh. People that own Jets players. Um. If you have Le'Veon Bell, you're you're concerned. I I know he hurt his hamstring. Uh. But Frank Gore. Um. Ended up having the same amount of carries as him. Um. You know, all of which came after Le'Veon Bell was out of the game. But, you know, we I already mentioned Frank Gore. He's going to be on people's rosters at some point. And it turns out week two, we're already here. Um, I would not go out and get him. I would just let him sit on somebody else's bench, especially next week against the 49ers. I don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. And Coach Adam Gase has already come out and said uh, that Bell could be looking at a couple weeks. So. Ugh. Thank goodness God. that if you draft the bell, just, you got him at a discount because nobody really wanted a part of that offense, let alone Le'Veon Bell after his huge letdown last season. Um, yep. Let's well and then maybe comes out and just lays an egg and is hurt already. They're I mean they're rolling with Frank Gore and Josh Adams out of the backfield. Are you interested in putting some fab down to get either one of those guys in the interim? Nope. I just hope they keep throwing to Crowder. Because I have him on every team, so <laughs> yeah, I, I you would you would hate yourself if you put either of one of least. them in your lineup, right? So. Yeah, you're not doing it. There's got to be better options. So uh, what hard, about the hard Bills? Pass there, uh, Bills. Uh, we asked, is the defense ready for prime time? And it kind of seemed like it, at least a little bit, until uh, Darno and uh, and Crowder got going. Um, and and what about what about the running backs? Um, I mean, Devin Singletary had nine carries. Zach Moss had nine carries. Singletary had seven targets. Zach Moss had four targets and he had a touchdown. Um, the running back to have in that offense is Josh Allen. Uh, he had 14 carries, 57 yards and a, and a rushing touchdown. Love it. Um, so it was just it was just straight up the Josh Allen show. Um, so if you were a Singletary owner, um, you know, that was looking at, you know, he was falling by the time we you started drafting. You were getting him in the fourth or fifth round too. Right. Um, and it and it seems like that's one of those where you just got to put him on your bench and um, and same with Zach Moss. I don't think you should be playing him either. It's it's literally just Josh Allen and Diggs and just figure out the rest later. Yeah, we've talked about this basically all offseason about how we think that the bills were going to come out of the season hot and it was going to be the Josh Allen show. And that's absolutely what it's just it turned is. into. I mean, yep. He's the goal line guy. He's bl- a blazer. He has the ball in his hands every single play. He's the guy that you want. Hopefully you got him cheap in your drafts and you're actually starting him. I wouldn't be confident about starting either one of those running backs in Singletary or Moss. Nope. And next week the Bills get Miami at Miami. And you saw what Cam Newton and you saw what Cam Newton did to them um this week for the Pats. Um so yeah, rough, rough start for Miami with with uh I, I, their defense is much better, but when you're running up against these running quarterbacks and uh, the NFL has changed so much, just like a year, right? Where you're, and like Kyler Murray goes off, Josh Allen goes off, Cam Newton goes off, Lamar's Lamar. Like it's, it's just, cr- and Joe Burrows, like there's just so many more running quarterbacks than there have been in the past. So hopefully they all stay healthy. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that game. Uh, moving over to the Packers and Vikings. Um, <laughs> what's the running back usage? What do wide receivers two look like for? I both was going to say we got to talk about these wide receivers for the Packers, man. And is Devontae going to have two hundred targets? And Devontae's going to have end, a million. Two hundred might be low. <laughs> I know, right? He might have two hundred catches by the time the season starts. Like, so, oh, Mar- Marquez Valdez Scantling uh, versus Alan Lazard is they both have the four matchup. catches. Yep, Scant. Scant- Gantling had six targets. I think Lazard had five. He had four um, and he caught all four. Four and had all four. Okay. 
Um, so, I mean, if, if they're going to throw the ball as much as they did, then I think they should both be owned until they figure out, like, if, if people figure out how to stop Devontae Adams, then Lazard and Scantling are, are definitely rosterable. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just my thought. Um, for the, for the running backs, um, Aaron Jones, um, was the guy, 16 carries, six targets. Um, I, I still think he ends up a top 15 running back this year just because of usage. Um, and apparently just the Viking secondary just really sucks. Cause I mean, six Rogers new players just, on that Vikings defense, man, they just y- yeah. did not look cohesive. Rogers just, just destroyed them. Um, he turned Devon, back the clock. Devante 17 targets, 14 catches, 156 yards, two touchdowns. I, I mean, I'll be surprised if he's not wide receiver one. I know we both had him uh, by the time we got to the season at wide receiver two uh, with yeah. Michael Thomas, and Michael Thomas looked terrible. Um, well, he got hurt too. Well, yeah, that was at the very end of the game, right? So, but yeah, I mean, Devontae, wow, just unbelievable. Um, look, looking forward to next week, they're home against Detroit, uh, and Mitchie Trubisky just destroyed them. Um, in the fourth quarter, so Mitchy I mean, Trubisky, to, and you have to like the Bears were rattling off five yards of carry. So um, it, it'll be interesting to see does that offense kind of go back to more of what it was last year with more running and less passing, or does it kind of stick with letting letting Rogers air it out a little bit more? Um, so th- you, that'll be interesting. You got to be a little bit okay. Well, switching back to the Packers, I mean, either one of these guys. MVS had six targets. Lazard had four. Uh, they both went, uh, they both had four catches. MVS went 496 in a touchdown. Lazard went four for 64 in a touchdown. So, you know, highly usable numbers if you did uh, get stuck starting either one of those guys. Um, you know, for me, if I'm, if I have to pick one of these guys up or if I'm really desperate and I, and I'm going after the Packers number two, at this point, I'm still going to pick Lazard um, because I think MVS just relies on that deep bomb. And yeah. I don't think that Lazard is as dependent on it. Um, nope. You did touch on Mishy Trubisky, so I guess I, I'm going to do a cheap Bears plug here. Um, I, we talked about our streams of the week, and I didn't want to plug Mitch as a potential stream of the week because I thought it was like too Homer-ish. But then it wasn't. He's the top quarterback on the waiver right now, waiver wire right now in terms of output with like uh, 25 some odd points. So, yep. Not mad about that. Um, for for the Vikings, I don't really have much to talk about. Um, they, I mean, their defense is bad. So that's, you know, that, that'll help their game script a little bit with throwing. I mean, Adam Thielen was great. He had uh, an if, impressive if score. Yeah, if you if you were getting Adam Thielen in the third round, I think you're pretty happy with his six catches, 110 yards, and two touchdown output. Um, Kirk Cousins, as long as he gets time, is fine. Um, and then the the running back breakdown there: uh, Delvin Cook had 12 carries, 50 yards, two touchdowns. Alexander Madison, six carries, 50 yards. Um, just waiting for Delvin to get hurt so Madison can take over. Um, but, That's almost. Uh, it's not a theme with them, but it's almost a theme with a lot of these backfields. There yep. was so much more splitting going on than I was anticipated with a lot of these backfields, like Madison included. I was not anticipating the Madison line. Yeah, the the sixty six percent of carries for Cook, I would assume, will increase. Um, but at least for week one, it was sixty six thirty three um, percentages on that. Um, all right, Eagles. Um, we're trying to figure out, is there any Eagles wide receivers? Um, and apparently the answer is no. Well, they're at the tight end position. <laughs> okay. So, so Dallas, Dallas Goddard ends up being the guy uh, this week instead of Zach Ertz, which was a little dis- bit disappointing as a, as an Ertz owner in a, in a league. Uh, Ertz started out hot. You know, he had the touchdown right away. Um, ended up with three, only three catches, 18 yards in the touchdown. Dallas Goddard. Goddard. It, Owned is is only owned in twenty seven percent of leagues. He's only Cr- owned in twenty seven percent of ESPN leagues. Had nine targets, eight catches, a hundred a hundred and one yards, and a score. He crazy. has to be one of, if not the priority tight end ads. I would agree with you. 
Uh, my issue with them, though, and I know Wash- the Washington football team's defense was actually really good. Carson yeah. Wentz did not look good. I mean, he got sacked, what, like eight times or something like that? It's Chase Young in that D-line. And the Ron so, Rivera defense. So, do you, I mean, next week they're facing the Rams. Do you think that gets any better with Aaron with Donald? Lo- yeah, coming for no. him? I, no, it doesn't get better. And they don't have anybody on the outside. I mean, Rager looked fine, I guess. That um, old line just looked sad. Yeah, so that's that's gonna be an issue, and I mean Miles um, Sanders and everything. I mean, I don't I don't know how it gets a whole lot better, right? Sanders Sanders in play, so maybe that improves with him back. But um, I mean, Boston Scott nine carries, thirty five yards. He was fine, but they like they were throwing. That's what the ball you 40, wanted. Yeah, they threw the ball forty two times, and they they had uh, fifteen design running plays, sixteen design running plays, forty two passes, just. So not not enjoying any of that. No. Um, the Washington football team, we were looking at Bryce Love and Antonio Gibson. And are we I, really going to do a Peyton Barber plug right now? Yes, <laughs> of course we are. <laughs> Peyton Barber owning one percent of leagues, seventeen for twenty nine, and two, two touchdowns. touchdowns. Okay, but like, come on. All right, they signed him this offseason to a contract extension. Once they got rid of Adrian Peterson. I like Bryce Love. If you drafted him, he should clearly be dropped. Um, Plug him all you want, Alex. I'm going to 1 million percent disagree with you on this as far as running out and picking up Peyton Barber. I really think that maybe Antonio Gibson is still just adjusting to the offense. I really think that Antonio Gibson shares continue to increase. I'm just, I don't think Peyton Barber is as good as uh, of a running back as Antonio Gibson is, but if you, if they're going to turn around and give him the goal line backs, would you fab on him? Seventeen for twenty nine? No, I wouldn't. But okay. I mean, you can try to you can try to get him for for free. Um, if I don't they, know if I would drop anybody over him, like I wouldn't drop injured guys to pick him up. I would drop Bryce Love over him. Okay, May, that would be like the guy because he's also on the same team. But like right, other than I, that, right, like I, so there's, there's yeah, I mean, very just, few. Just right. I mean, obviously it depends on on the players you have. Um, but he did have two touchdowns, and if that if that would happen to continue where he's getting the goal line carries, um, then I mean he's at least worth a speculative ad. Um but yeah, I mean I wouldn't be surprised to see him still be a free agent after this week. Um next week they're at Arizona, um, who got Slightly destroyed by by Mostert when they actually gave him the ball. Man, did Jimmy uh, G look not great? Well, yeah, he doesn't have any weapons, so it's rough. <sighs> All right, uh, Ravens and Browns. Um, oh boy, ra- <sighs> man, uh, Ravens. We were looking at Ingram versus J.K. Dobbins. Um, Dobbins had more snaps. That's crazy. I know you're happy as an owner. I'm so freaking thrilled. I. So I, I, I have Cortland Sutton and Debo Samuel. And so we're in like this weird flex thing. We're trying to be flexible because of COVID. And so I actually ended up being semi forced to start JK Dobbins in a spot start. Hated it. Um, just because I hate starting rookies, it let alone ones behind Mark Ingram. And, uh, Man, did that pan out well, even though I'm still going to lose the week for other injury related reasons. <clears throat> James Conner. Um, yeah, that was interesting. And two touchdowns on carries inside the five. Not yeah, afraid to give the rookie some goal line work. Like, yeah, I think they're I think they're trying to keep Lamar healthy, too. So I, I think that even increases. Dobbins value potentially even more just because they're more willing to, to turn around and give it to more of a true goal line back. The one thing I that, hated say Ingram isn't no. The one thing I hated was the amount of carries that Gus Edwards got. Like, I just yep. want to cut him out of the offense completely split the carries between Ingram and Dobbins. It was only four, but I get what you're saying. Well, also the plays on the field, just on the field in general. Like I just yeah. want Dobbins on the field. Um, I'm really interested to see because this was just week one. So I'm really interested to see how the split share continues to evolve for Dobbins. Incredibly encouraged. And everybody has to be given the fact that he had two carries at inside the five in week one. 
So Dobbins they, they, could take over sooner than expected. Right. And uh, again, both of those guys are on rosters. I, I think you. I, yeah, that's it's, not t- it's, t- it's tough to start Ingram. Hopefully you have a, a better alternative than him after a, a paltry 10 carries, 29 yards. Um, that's that's not going to cut it, um, especially if you're not getting any any targets um, or uh, he had no catches. He might have had a target or two. Um, and, but the really encouraging thing, I mean, Lamar's passing looked great. Hollywood Brown, if you if you got him a little later, around five, six, depending on where you were drafting, um, five catches, 101 yards. Uh, Mark Andrews, five catches, 58 and two touchdowns, um, where all of a sudden all you're looking Mark at Andrews doubters. Yeah, I mean, he came out and, you know, he might not have the highest number of targets from the tight end position because I think that'll still be Kittle and Kelsey but from an output doesn't perspective matter. yeah it, it clearly doesn't matter so uh, if, if you have Andrews I I want to see Hollywood score touchdowns I, I think that's where he's going to struggle because I think Andrews is going to be the you know they're either going to run the ball in or they're going to be looking for the tight end the like Hollywood you might even look at trading him you know where where you, you try to get somebody that's going to have more end zone targets because I just don't think he's going to have them but he, he might throw up these 100 yard weeks but he might be capped at like a, a 13 14 point week um, just because he's not going to be scoring a ton of touchdowns so just just something to be thinking about uh, when you're looking at your roster construction and then Cleveland um, we were looking at how much were they going to use Austin Hooper Ooh. and what the running backs looked like um, Austin Hooper had two targets <laughs> what did we say i think i was quoted as saying they couldn't support david and joku for multiple seasons in a row so i don't really understand why everybody's in a hurry to go add austin hooper to their fantasy lineups so um, njoku is out for the year now he doesn't he had, matter he had three catches 50 yards and a touchdown so Baker Mayfield cannot throw the freaking ball yeah i don't understand why he doesn't get crapped on more um like, OBJ no, was open. OBJ sorry. was open several times. I should not have said crapped on and then you followed up with Odell. That was that was not in sorry to everybody. That was not intentional. Um yeah, he's bad. <sighs> he's really bad. You have um, to be frustrated. I mean, honestly though, like let's be real for a second. You did not draft OBJ if you listen to the podcast because we have said from the beginning, yeah. OBJ yep. is drafted on name alone. Like yep. that's he's not going to perform, and we saw he's, that week one. He still might go off a couple of weeks, um, but yeah, three catches, twenty two yards is just not going to cut it. Um, what one, about one that? thing? I go ahead. No, I was just going to say one thing. I did find interesting. They threw the ball thirty nine times. I know they were down the whole game to the Ravens. They ran the ball twenty five. Um, so like, if they get up in a game, I feel like they're just going to pound Hunt and Chubb. Hunt had more carries. Um, 13 to 10 and outrushed uh, Chubb 72 to 60 yards. Um, so if you have Nick Chubb, you have to be very concerned about Kareem Hunt and how much he's eating in, which which again, we've we talked about preseason. So hopefully you don't own. Hopefully you're not owning owning Chubb if you're listening to us. Not only that, we posted an, an article on our website called Nick Chubb. No, thanks. And it was solely based on the the Nick Chubb Kareem Hunt split. And yep. we got so much flack for saying that we didn't think Nick Chubb was going to be very great this season because of the split with Kareem Hunt. And, and because Baker Mayfield's bad. And, you know, may, that maybe also, it wasn't that helps. Maybe it wasn't the coaching. Maybe it's maybe it's the quarterback there. Um, so so rough. Uh, but oh, I mean, Odell had 10 targets, so you, you can't give up on him. But I, it's tough to, tough to start five him. five feet away. <laughs> I know. Tough to start him. Um, all right. Next game, Jags and Colts. Uh, I believe we mentioned last week. Don't be surprised to see the Jags up in the fourth quarter and Philip Rivers throw a fourth fourth uh, quarter interception, um, which happened. So, hey, good good job by us. Um, I, DJ Chark uh, was was what I was looking for for the Jags last week. He only had three targets. Um, he caught all three of them for twenty five yards. Um, I would expect that to increase. Uh, Keelan Cole, um, I believe, led them in targets this last week. Um, and I love Keelan Cole last year. And he like all of a sudden he totally disappeared the second half of the season. 
Um, so it, it was actually nice to see Keelan Cole come back. Um, five catches, 47 yards and a touchdown. Um, I, I don't know if you need to roster him yet. Um, maybe give it another week. Um, but he should at least be on your radar um, from from the Keelan Cole, especially if Minshew is going to complete 95 percent of his passes. 19 of um, 20. Yeah, they didn't run like they didn't have the ball because Philip Rivers had the ball the whole time um, and then would turn it over. They get down to the goal line and then turn it over, or, you know, whatever. So I, I do still think that the Jags offense will be explosive from the passing side of things. Uh, I'm not sure really what to expect. I know James Robinson um, did have 16 carries, 62 yards. Um, so he's potentially somebody that you should be looking at rostering uh, going forward. He was the um, only running back that had a rush attempt for the Jaguars this year. A uh, kid out of Illinois State is a rookie. Um, so, yeah, he's clearly the guy. He's there. only uh, rostered in about 29% of leagues. So he is going to be one of... Uh, the primary running back waiver ads this week was 17 touches, 16 running back or 16 rushes. So I guess the only thing that makes me slightly worried about James Robinson was he didn't, he looked okay. He didn't look great. Um, Maybe. And this is something I happen. I think that happens a lot in week two this season. Um, I think a lot of vets didn't get signed because their contracts would have been guaranteed if they were on week one rosters. I would, I would not be surprised if Devonta lands somewhere. I don't know, like the Jaguars who he literally tried out for last week. So, yep. so maybe the James Robinson value is a week one thing. Only the only other thing I would say is I would evaluate adding LaVisca Chenault Jr. The guy is a stud. Nice pronunciation. LaVisca Chenault Jr. He's a stud. He's only rostered in less than 7% of leagues. Um, He went three for 37 and a score on the ground. And then he also had four targets for two catches and 10 yards in the air. Super versatile guy. I just, he was a stud through training camp. I think he could potentially develop into a solid role, especially if they don't add a running back. So, yep. I got yeah, him the, stocked in a lot of leagues. Some, some, so you were asking, like, hey, who would you drop to pick up Peyton Barber? I would drop Chris Thompson if you have him rostered. Yes. Um, I, I know, I know some people did um, draft him, uh, assuming that he was going to have that production um, in Gruden's offense um, and he uh, did not. Um, so that, that would just be somebody that, you know, potentially I, he's very droppable at this point um, after a two catch six yards performance. Um, and I know that Jags didn't have the ball that much. Maybe he turns it back on, but I, I think you're safe dropping him currently um, looking at the Colts um, trying to figure out if T.Y. Hilton was, was back and healthy uh, he did have nine targets, which which led the team. Um, Philip Rivers threw 46 times, and they had 21 design running plays. Marlon Mack is now out for the season with a torn uh, Achilles. Achilles tendon. And uh, so theoretically, Jonathan Taylor would take over. But Naheem Hines, man, of the Ooh. three running backs, he's the guy that ended up showing up week one. And he might be one of the guys I'm most excited to add this week. Naheem Hines only owned in 34% of ESPN leagues. Uh, seven for 28 and one on the ground. And then eight catches for 45 and another score through the air. Like Phil Rivers versatile. loves checking down. He and loves he's going to be in on down. every third down, especially mm-hmm. if it's Jonathan Taylor. Like to me, the third down risk might have been only Mac because Mac knew the offense. You got a rookie there. They're not going to put the rookie in on third down to protect uh, Phil Rivers. I think it's Naheem Hines' job to lose on third downs. I really think he could be something special. And I think he's a priority add uh, coming into week two. Yeah, and and you'll definitely see what that backfield looks like without Mac this week. So yeah, I I, I think you definitely need to add Naheem Hines. Um, How if much he's available fab are you league. willing to spend on Naheem? Um, probably similar to Watkins, honestly. Only five um, bucks, maybe in a hundred dollar league. Yeah, I, if you go zero and one bad and you're hurt, like you got, say you had Mac. You, 
if well if you, if you have Le'Veon Bell um or James Conner or you know whomever like all the guys that got hurt yeah I mean maybe maybe a smidge more um I I feel like he could be very Austin Eckler-ish though right if, like kind of a similar with Philip Rivers being there checking down all the time if he gets any rushing attempts which it seems like he might um after having seven um and Jonathan Taylor having nine I you think it's more than that? I guess I would go somewhere between seven and ten. So somewhere between seven percent and ten percent of whatever your fab budget is. Yeah, I think that's a smidge high, but teach their just, own. Uh, just if you really want to land him. If you want to, yeah, you know, I, you need to know yeah. how the guys in your league bid. And that's for yep. everything. Yep, absolutely. All right, um, <clears throat> Panthers, Panthers, Raiders. Uh, I'm taking the over in every single Panthers game the rest of the season. Okay, but um, how good did Josh Jacobs look, though? Can we just talk we'll, about it? Because, we'll, oh my goodness. Yeah, we can start there. That's fine. Because I, I, I don't know if anybody has been screaming louder for Josh Jacobs than I have been, or we, us. I'm gonna, just going to pull you in and give you credit for how good Josh Jacobs I'll take Josh anything Jacobs you like to share, because, but this is mostly you. Mm, 30 to 40 points oh my 35 36 week one how many scores like are you kidding me josh jacobs literally i called him the ultimate draft value like the guy it's gonna be so good this year i'm so mad i don't have more shares of him yeah i am too um he had six targets which we talked about so that i mean that throws him on pace for 96 targets and if he gets 96 if yeah, if he gets ninety six targets, then I mean he's a top four back, <sighs> top three back, honestly. <laughs> um, so uh, I mean for the Raiders specifically, we we're looking to see what Darren Waller was going to do, and if he's still the best wide receiver. He led the team with eight targets, but his longest catch was eight yards. Waller uh, six is. catches, forty five yards is not not inspiring. Not, not great, um, but yeah, Jacobs twenty five carries, ninety three yards, three touchdowns. Six targets, four catches for 46 yards. Is that all? Um, just I, he's gonna be I a mean, stud, ladies and gents, all year. I hope you got him in the second round because if you did, you are set. Yeah, you're you're doing real good. As far as the Panthers' offense goes, um, and me betting the over, their defense is bad. Their offense is fine. Um, but like, uh, clearly Christian McCaffrey's fine. Bridgewater is more than serviceable. Um. But I mean, their defense, and this is a terrible joke, but literally they need to shower because they smell so bad. They stunk. <laughs> like, like their offense is smooth as baby's bottom. Um, but I mean, DJ Moore had nine targets. Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel both had eight targets. Christian McCaffrey, I, I love everything about that offense. Um, so if, if you're if you did not have a quarterback, I do think Teddy Bridgewater is more than going to be more than serviceable as a as a top, streamer every week yeah i would say a very uh, solid top end quarterback too um yeah and even fringe one based on what some of the top guys did uh and next week they play tampa bay and their defense was meh so as far as our uh week one waiver advice goes robbie anderson is miraculously to me is owned in 68 percent of leagues never would have guessed uh yeah Eight eight targets, six catches, 115 and a touchdown. Ooh. I I'm surprised he's owning 68% of leagues. I really don't think that that goes up a whole lot, but maybe it should. Yeah, I mean, he was the big I mean, he was a free agent. And if they have him running wide receiver one routes and and have him being the focus of the offense, but again, the targets were basically split exactly equal between DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Curtis Samuel. So that doesn't really seem to be the case. It just seems like Teddy was throwing the open guy and um, dispersing the ball around, which is which is good to see. Teddy Bridgewater, 22 of 34, 270 yards, one touchdown. Um, and Christian McCaffrey, um, 23, 96, two touchdowns. He's still Christian McCaffrey. So that, that might be the thing that limits the the quarterback and wide receiver upside a little bit is they're going to make sure that Christian gets, gets, his, uh, gets his touches uh, around the goal line. Um, Talk to me about Bears Lions. Let's do it. Mitchie Trubisky, man. I told said the last three starts, 
nine <sighs> touchdowns, delivers again with three touchdowns. I uh, wanted to make Mitch my QB stream of the week, but I was too afraid because we are the fantasy football sackos. Everything is Bears. Everybody knows we're Bears fans. I didn't want to say that Mitch was the QB stream of the week, even though we kind of mentioned it offhand because I didn't want to be labeled as a homer. Guess what? He is the highest scoring quarterback on our waiver wire in our very competitive league. So we were, we would have hit that on the head, but yeah, we uh, the problem is, is I don't know to. if he's a good quarterback and he's great um, in the fourth quarter. <laughs> I thought he should have been benched after the first half. So I oh, would not, you're not alone. I would not be adding Mitch Trubisky um, or wasting a, a roster spot on him yet. You know I, who I, I would add? Anthony freaking Miller four for 76 and a touchdown. He's only owned in 38% of leagues. He the wasn't on the field has, that much. He was not on the field that much. He ran a route the wrong way in the first half and kind of saw the bench for a little while. Um, but like he's super explosive when they get him the ball, but his route running again, we've talked about it, is just not the best. Um, next week, the New York, the bears are playing the New York giants. Um, and I, I, might even have David Montgomery in my top 10 rankings next week. Um, after after what Benny Snell did to them this week, they like the Giants defense is not good. Um, and David Montgomery, 13 carries, 64 yards. Um, I continue to think that goes up. The Bears were again rushing five yards in attempt against the Detroit Lions defense. The Giants defense is worse than the Lions rush defense. Um, so I, I think David Montgomery might be a top top 10 running back next week um, as long as they continue to run the ball and, and give him um, let him eat a little bit. It was good to see that he was healthy and made it through the game healthy after that groin scare a couple weeks ago. This makes me feel dirty, though, for the Lions. Adrian Peterson with this 14 rush attempts for 93 yards. The guy just got signed off the street in street clothes like three days ago. And here he comes in rushing the ball 14 times, taking away from DeAndre Swift and Kerryon Johnson, who was labeled the starter. Like, that Lions backfield has to be a stay away. AP owned in 21% of leagues. I'm not telling you to go and pick the guy up because I I don't want him. I don't think anybody wants any of these guys, right? It's just a complete stay away now. Be, so, like, when Debo was announced as being out on IR and Sutton and... um. Uh, whoever else, I don't remember. Oh, Galladay. Um, like I went and picked up Adrian Peterson in both in those leagues where I was able to, just because I had like a weird feeling about it. I I do think he should be rostered. Uh, if he gives you another week of of you know fourteen, fifteen carries and eighty yards, you you have to you have to at least roster him. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't really like the uh, upside again, isn't there for me. So I'm just I would pick elsewhere if if you have deandre swift on your roster uh if you have carry on johnson on your roster how close to york uh are you of cutting them i i am somebody that has carry on and i will tell you that i am dropping him this week unquestioned yeah and and that's not to make a deandre swift dropping the the game-winning touchdown joke either um i i i mean carry on i don't think should be rostered at this point with with peterson no. there uh, and Swift is just if you if you were sitting there in like the sixth or seventh round and you're like, well, DeAndre Swift is the highest rated running back left. You got to just be like, man, this sucks. We said so. not to overreact at the beginning of the show. However, if a team is willing to give a running back off the street in street clothes, how many carries? Fourteen carries over guys over Carry On Johnson, who's been there for several years now. Cut Carry On Johnson. That is what the team yeah. thinks about carry on. Like I'm saying, don't yeah, you overreact. Should, you should but definitely also, like, cut carry on. Recognize the fact that carry on is not a part of this offense anymore. Yep. So, although he, uh, so carry on had seven carries uh, and started both the first and second half with a rushing attempt and then went to the sideline. So see ya. Yeah. No, thanks. Uh, Lions. I was looking for Galladay targets and then he pulled his hamstring basically as we were recording uh, and obviously did not have any targets. Um, and that Falcon just sucks. Seahawks. Um, let's go. All right. Todd Gurley, 14 carries, five targets. He's a solid RB2 going forward, right? Yeah. I mean, there's really wasn't a whole lot of competition behind him for any usage. 
Gurley's the guy just as long as his knees hold up. I just really um, question his efficiency and how much he'll be actually be able to convert into meaningful fantasy scoring. Yep. So. Uh, Julio Jones, nine catches, 157 yards. Calvin Ridley, nine catches, 130 yards, two touchdowns. And then oh, who's this? Don't Gage stop. Guy? I was going to say, don't stop there. We got yards. Russell Gage. Yeah. Three per owned at three point eight percent. Three point eight percent, less than four percent of ESPN leagues. Twelve targets, nine catches, one hundred and fourteen yards. Are you kidding me? You have to add Ow. him. Twelve targets. That's wide receiver one target numbers. Yeah, I I'm mean, spending. If, if they're going to let, if they're gonna let him, Matt Ryan throw fifty four times. Wow. They led the league in pass attempts last season with almost 700. 686. I'm adding Russell well, they're Gage. they're on pace for eight, over 800 this year. I'm Well, I, I'm, let's not be ridiculous. But I know. I'm, I'm adding Russell Gage over MVS, uh, Anthony Miller, AP, Peyton Barber. I'm adding him probably over Sammy Watkins. I, I don't know, just because I don't believe in the week one Sammy Watkins. Um, Robbie Anderson, definitely like Russell Gage, man, that offense flows through Matt Ryan. I, yeah, it does. I, I think, I think that's a little aggressive. Um, I, I don't know how good he, like, he's a guy that he's like the, is he going to be the John Ross of this year who goes off week one and then. People spend a bunch of fab on and then drop him silently mm. in three weeks after he puts up a one for 24 He's not yards. my number one receiver waiver target, so I'm not going to be ridiculous here, but I'm just excited for the 12 targets. You got to chase targets. All right. I will say I'm a little bit dis- a little disappointed in our Hayden Hurst Helmsley guy. Uh, only three catches, 38 yards. You can't drop him yet, um, especially with how much they throw the ball. You got to assume that they're going to use him at some point. You know who um, I'm more disappointed in? Chris Carson. No? For the Seahawks. Yeah, I, I think you got to be looking at trading him, right? I mean, the, the two two touchdown receptions Could you is a little get fluky. anything for him? Like, you spent a third on him. You're not going to get... I mean, the split carries... The Carlos Hyde touchdown, like you I was very be, happy with myself that I, I took Todd Gurley over Chris Carson in our league, and I can't um, believe that you did. If I'm being completely honest, yeah, and I I'm proud of myself after week one. Yeah, the the fact that <laughs> here don't the, hurt yourself. No, I I'm not even trying to pat myself on the back. It's just like. I if can't Carlos believe Hyde is going to have more rushing attempts than Chris Carson, seven carries to six carries. I mean, Carson had six six catches, but ah, Carson concerns, man. That that is very concerning. Um, yeah. And theoretically, like he produced from a fantasy output, but that is a guy that if they're going to let Russ throw as much as he did, uh, thirty five attempts. Um, which is great for Lockett and Metcalf, um, but thir- 38 design passes, 17 design run plays. Um, man, that's rough for Chris Carson, but good for Russ and, and wide receivers there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, don't really have a whole lot to add. Uh, I'm just so disappointed in freaking Chris Carson. Yeah, you should be trying to trade Chris Carson. Um, I don't know for what that you can get, but just take his points week one and try to parlay it into honestly try to trade Chris Carson for Todd Gurley. Like I, I think that's right. Do, do you disagree with that? I would say definitely try. If I was a Gurley owner, I would turn that down in a heartbeat though. But I mean, maybe some people do accept it, but yeah, I, I would try to make that trade or, I, or go or like try to get Aaron Jones or try to get Austin Eckler or something like that, where if you're you know, lucky, maybe somebody's down on, on their trades, guy after smash them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, or would would you trade him for Joe Mixon? Yes. We're yeah, we're gonna get to the Bengals here in a second. Um all right, Dolphins, Patriots. Um Hello Cam we're looking Newton. at Matt Breida versus Jordan. Yeah, well, so Dolphins. We were looking at Howard and the bread man, and then neither one led the team in carries, which is just what's stupid. up, Miles Gaskin? 
Miles Gaskin. Oh my Who? goodness. Led the Dolphins in carries. Uh nine carries, 40 yards, four catches for another 26. That's like, crazy to me. That doesn't make any sense. They traded for Brita. They signed Jordan Howard in the offseason and they give the ball to Miles Gaskins. Alex, if you had to guess Miles Gaskins rostered percentage on ESPN, what would you guess? 2% lower. Only because people were able to add to him as the games were going. Yeah. Okay, good. Half a percent? 0.1. <laughs> Wow. 0.1 in and all of ESPN leagues. He got in 13 touches. Good for those guys. <sighs> that must have been a very... They must be playing in like a... Either a 20-team 20, 20 league with like 800 bench spots or... That's crazy. Um, all right, Patriots. Cam Newton looked great. Um, if they're going to... It's tough to start James White or Sony Michelle, even though Sony Michelle had 10 carries and a touchdown. Burkhead had seven carries, but Cam had 15 carries, uh, two rushing touchdowns uh, down by the goal line. Um, I still think it's hard to trust a New England wide receiver and, or sorry, New England running back, and it will be going forward. Well, to me, it's it's very simple. Cam Newton is the New England running back to own. 15 carries, 75 yards, two scores. I mean, that's that's the guy, especially with Michelle. You you don't have Damian Harris there adding that extra dimension to the offense. Um, I just I don't really want any of the the Patriots RBs unless you're playing in some crazy plus matchup. Like, I don't know, maybe against the Dolphins, you might start Michelle. But yeah, yeah. Um, don't if, be surprised. If you draft Cam Newton late as a flyer, he man, could finish so as a right QB one. He could finish easily as a QB one. Like Josh McDaniels yeah. is tailoring this offense to freaking Cam Newton, and the guy's running around just like the foot injuries were never an issue. So hopefully that holds up for sixteen and games. And don't and don't think that that they're not enjoying having a mobile quarterback instead of Tom Brady back there. Right, <laughs> they they are they are loving every every second of that. All right, Chargers Bengals. Uh, this is my we pickup of the week. Kick on this one, pickup Ooh, of the week. That? Josh Kelly, hands really? down. Yes, twelve rushes, sixty yards, and a score. Okay. Uh, only owned in eleven percent of leagues. I think that he absolutely uh, threw Justin Jackson to the uh the back burner justin jackson basically started in the first yep. half um in that melvin gordon s sort of supplementary role to eckler and then uh basically that wasn't working out too hot so hey what's up josh kelly oh not much just rushing for five five yards a clip and a score and uh justin jackson was basically non-existent in the second half so yep. if if i'm bidding on an rb it's Josh freaking Kelly. Like, and I'm probably doing at least 10 to 15% fab. I still think that's probably too high only because and I don't I'll know get what that him and you won't. Like. And the that's Bengals, fine with me. That's fine. The Bengals defense is not very good. Um, or at least I don't think they're very good. And so like, you got Tyrod. I just don't like, Eckler is still going to be there. Just it could have been a hot hand thing. Eckler um, was there I'm, last I'm year. Spending. Melvin Gordon was there last year, and they were both still very productive. I just think that Josh Kelly elevated himself over Justin Jackson. And so if that's the case, I don't think that Eckler is ever going to be a three down back. And so if he can elevate himself into that Melvin Gordon role. I mean, Eckler had 19 carries, though. It's not like he and wasn't Josh Kelly only in the had, And game. Josh Kelly had 12, though. So it's only seven less. Yeah, it was. No, I know that both of them. That's a lot, right? I mean, Tyrod only threw 30 times, so they ran the ball more than they threw. They weren't behind in the game, but I don't think Tyrod's ever yes. going to throw for more than 30 passes in a game, right? Like that's not Tyrod's strength. 
I don't I think mean, he I don't did, think they were Tyrod's out here being game. a gunslinger. So, no, clearly not. And we did warn people before the season to not trust the Chargers wide receiver and only trust Hunter Henry. What happened week one? Not to pat ourselves on the back. Hunter Henry five catches, seventy three yards. Um, yeah. Keenan Allen, four catches, 37 yards. Mike Williams, four for 69. Nice yards. I just don't. And everybody thought we I were just crazy. Don't trust. Yeah, no no thanks on, on their wide receivers going forward. And then the Bengals. Um, I mean, A.J. Green looked like the wide receiver in that offense. Um, Tyler Boyd was a little bit disappointing. He didn't. I think he had a donut in the first half um, and started putting it together a little bit. Um, AJ Green nine targets. Tyler Boyd only had five. Um, at me being high on Boyd, it's a little bit disappointing. But I mean, Burrow seems legit. Uh, I'm not super worried about it. The Chargers defense is probably a top twelve, top fifteen defense in the league. Those cornerbacks um, the, though the are issue like top with two or the, three though, and we talked about it in our weekend preview. Like, yeah, that was going to be a tough matchup, especially with a rookie QB trying to get it out to those guys. I wasn't surprised to see that performance. I started the Chargers defense in a lot of leagues because of it. So, yeah. It, and the the I guess the only crappy thing for Bengals players is they're going to have to play the Ravens twice and the Steelers twice. That sucks because otherwise I think their offense can be really explosive when they're not playing those those right. teams. Um. And I, I'd kind of like to see Burrow. I, I was a little disappointed in Joe Mixon. Um, he did have 19 carries, 69 nice yards. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, he's still not involved. He's still not involved in the passing game. Well, they got Gio um, with the mustache taking that, your mom out to dinner. It's true. Um, so, as, as a Mixon owner, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. But, I mean, he was an RB1 last year. Um, and just, yeah, first week, not not great. No. Um, and anybody to add in that uh, for that game? No, nobody. I'm really truly excited about. If I'm being completely honest, yeah. um, the only person and I'm really, I, I, I really was excited about was Josh Kelly on the Chargers, the Bengals. No. Like, yeah, I'm. I'm everybody's already Jay Green. It's good. It's good to good to have him back, and hopefully, you can stay healthy. Um, all right, Cardinals 49ers. Um, man. Kyler Murray looked legit. Uh, he's fast. He's got a legit number one wide receiver in Hopkins. 14 Did you catches, hear 151 D-Hop's, yards. Like, Post game interview. No. Well, Kyler just kept throwing me the ball and we just kept making plays. And that's just what we did. Like he just kept throwing it to me. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like Deshaun Watson for the last like three years. <laughs> Like, do you know what Deshaun Watson yeah. missed? He missed throwing it to just that guy. Like, I can't. The, the, he, the one one person is going to keep them in so many more games that they have no business being in, including this one. Like, everybody wrote them yeah, off I mean, after, before the after game. After Mostert, after Mostert had that long touchdown, like that seventy six yards on the over, fly. Right? 22 and a half some odd miles an hour the fastest single speed or the fastest speed with the ball in your hands in like three years like faster than Brita was last year like unbelievable yeah that's crazy I, I would not have seen that number coming from him I didn't think he was that fast but neither did I, mean, I. The, the, 40, the 49ers clearly struggled without having Debo or Brandon Ayuk uh, and on then the he field they just did not have playmakers and right they they miss I mean I was high on Mostert. I had him ranked inside the top 10 last week. Um, and he delivered because of that catch. But um, yeah, I mean, 15 carries, 56 yards. Um, Jarek McKinnon did eat into that a little bit. He had three carries. Um, McKinnon also had three catches. Um, but yeah, it, it seemed like it was Mostert's show. So as long as it stays Mostert's show, he, like, I think he's a def- of easy RB2 going forward. Um, fringe RB1 for me. Question for you, though, with the yep. uh, lack of Tevin Coleman, that was presumably because of the weather and, and the air quality index. Um, do you think that maybe Mosert potentially comes back to earth should Coleman come back into the fold? Maybe. I mean, Coleman still he still had four carries. Um, so why like why but, even play or like if you're 
not comfortable with it, then don't play. If he was active, like, I don't know why they wouldn't have used him the way that they were going to. You're not just sure. going to change that the day of. Sure. Or maybe you do. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, Bucks and Saints. Um, two old quarterbacks that kind of look old to me. Tom looked not great. Those Some of those picks were not great. Like, you got to be a little bit worried if you have a lot of shares in that Bucks offense with the way that Tom looked. Um, Saints, obviously, Michael Thomas gets hurt. Not great. Kamara nope. was not a fan of Kamara and Lat Murray virtually splitting rushing attempts. I know Kamara obviously still contributed heavily in the receiving game. Uh, Got to be a little bit concerned if you're a Kamara owner there. Um, yeah, I think I think you should be trying to trade Kamara. Actually, um, he he seems like he's going to be super touchdown dependent, and the defense really focuses on him when they're when he's in the game. Yeah, like he, well, I mean, he just didn't have anything Thomas going out. Yeah, I mean, he, he, don't get me wrong. I think he's still probably an RB one the rest of the way. Um, but the, their offense just did not. Going back to the Vikings game last year in the playoffs, like Drew Brees just doesn't look great. And if you're a Michael Thomas owner. Only having five targets in that game um, is very disappointing. Um, so, yeah, just something to I'm, I'm concerned about both offenses. Honestly, Mike Evans, if he didn't have the two yard touchdown catch at the end of the game, literally he would have been blanked. Um, Gronk, three targets. I mean, is Scotty Miller and O.J. Howard? I was really going to say O.J. Howard, though. Like I, I, Godwin did fine. Um, but yeah, yeah I. The, and then when it comes to the running backs, like Ronald Jones was clearly the guy. Fournette looked terrible in his five carries that he got. Um, Ronald Jones, 17 carries, 66 yards, and and looked explosive and was clearly the better back. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just really a letdown for me as a Fournette owner. I really thought that he might be able to come in there and sort of upset the Rojo mix going on there. Didn't happen. Didn't look great. Just really not looking forward to it, but you can't drop him because not yet. maybe it's just a learning curve thing. I, I mean, who really knows? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, if he only gets five carries for 10 yards next week, I think you're looking at potentially dropping him after next week. Um, if Ronald Jones continues to be the guy and getting 15 plus carries um, in that offense. Um, all right, Rams, Cowboys. Um Mm. Rams Rams backfield Malcolm Brown 18 carries 79 yards two tutties yeah but like you have to know it's not for long you have to are you sure yes because I feel like Cam Akers really like Cam Akers did not have a bad showing so I'm just if if I own Malcolm Brown I am trading him and I am calling him the starting running back for this high scoring offense that was very competitive with the Dallas Cowboys. Like, I think that they could score a lot of points on a lot of teams. And whoever that starting running back is, I want. I just don't think that it's necessarily Malcolm Brown for the course of the season. Okay. Yeah, and, and the Rams offense looks very strange because, I mean, the Dallas front, like, seven. I know Van Der Esch went out, but, man, Alden Smith being back, he looked legit. They got Everson Griffin down. Like, their, their front, like, they were getting the ball out quick, and I think that offense looks different going forward, and maybe they're hitting Cooper Cup on some longer longer plays. I'm not concerned about Tyler Higby yet, um, but Robert Woods looked good. Your, Robert your Woods was a freaking stud, man. Like, and and just to get back to Malcolm Brown, Malcolm Brown is only owned in eight percent of leagues. Like the, Ooh. he is only owned in eight percent of leagues. He's going to be a waiver wire target for a lot of teams and a lot of people this week. How much would you spend picking up Malcolm Brown if you think he's a starter? If he's going to continue to do this the rest of the year, I think you're looking at you know fifteen to twenty percent of Fab. I, we don't think that that's going to happen, though. So I, I would not spend that. 10 to 15 um, percent. Maybe just to just to take a flyer. I mean, if if he's going to like. I don't I still think that they turn into a passing offense most of the year, so I don't really care about their backfield um, until proven. Otherwise, I know Malcolm Brown obviously was good, 
I just don't. I just can't see that continuing for the rest of the season. Yeah. And, and plus Dar- Daryl Henderson was banged up a little bit and, and you know, for it being Cam Akers first, first week, he had 14 carries. He only had 39 yards. Um, but I mean, they were still trusting him giving them the ball. So I just, yeah, I, I, me personally, I don't think I'd go more than 10% of fab. Um, and again, I'm, I'm a, the save the sauce guy and just let everybody else spend it all. So you can save it for the end and actually get it when guys get hurt. But week one is you have the most people available. It seems like half the league, you know, your league will just drop everybody that sucked week one. So, be you know, more than anything, you know, we're talking about all these players. Be also be on the lookout, you know, come Wednesday after waivers process for players that people dropped because there could be a yes. lot of value in some like somebody might drop like a seventh, eighth rounder that that you know you might be high on so definitely look and see who people dropped because there there could be a diamond or two in there too so just something to be aware of 100 um, percent uh, as far as the cowboys go uh, i forgot mike mccarthy sucked as a as a head coach um he kept aaron Rodgers down for years um and uh <laughs> apparently apparently now he's gonna do it for dak prescott for dak oh my god amari cooper though 10 catches 81 yards 14 targets, uh, a lot of that with Jalen Ramsey on him. Um, has to be an encouraging sign where it looked like he was clearly the number one over Gallup. C.D. Lamb looked fine, um, but people were way overdrafting C.D. Lamb. Um, I, yeah, I don't, that I don't never see, made sense to me. Yeah, I don't see it. Um, quick, uh, quick hitter for Steelers Giants. Uh, we're recording this late night uh, on a Monday. Uh, Deontay Johnson finished with... Uh, Basically double the targets of Juju Smith-Schuster, 10 targets to six. So you have to be happy with that if you're a Deontay Johnson owner. But Juju Smith-Schuster had two touchdowns. So um, I I think you're you're okay as an owner of both. Uh, Big Ben looked healthy, and really that's all that matters. Um, sucks about James Conner. Um, Benny Smell. James Conner got hurt, Benny but Smell. like <laughs> he got hurt, but he was fine. But he got hurt, but he was walking around and he was fine. But they were up, so he didn't need to go back in. Look, if you listen to this podcast and you've made it to hour 10, please don't rush out and pick up Benny Snell. It's fool's gold. It's a one week thing. I know like James Conner is going to be back. He's not he's hurt, but he I don't think he really misses time. So I would not run out and spend a bazillion dollars on adding Benny Snell to my bench. Uh, You're in rough shape if you're a a Saquon owner, 15 carries, six yards tonight. You're in rough shape if you play the Pittsburgh defense. Yeah, I think that's exactly exactly what we learned. Danny Dimes looked fine. He did have two picks, but um, was was really driving on what I think we consider maybe the best defense in the NFL at this point. Um, And then nothing significant really happened in in the Broncos Titans game. Uh, Noah Fant looked good. Um, I am looking at my roster now and it looks like I lost by 0.7 in one league uh, oh. because Noah Fant and uh, AJ Brown did not show up and uh, I lost by 1.4 in another league. So my season's off to a great start. How's your season <laughs> starting, Jason? <laughs> God, come on. Oh, man. not bad. I just I I uh, I found myself constantly unable to pass up on the value of Cortland Sutton and Debo Samuel given their injury. And so knowing that I would potentially submarine week one into, uh, or weeks one, two, and three, if you're a Debo owner, um, just trying to get those guys back healthy for what it could mean for the, the stretch run. Um, I I'm, I'm definitely suffering. Uh, however, the James Connor sewer that was today really hurt. Uh, carry on really hurt me. Um, just do you really want to hurt me? Had, had, had some guys go off for double digits on my bench when I have carry on, on, on in my lineup for one point. So just really didn't feel good in a lot of ways. Um, but before we do sign off and get out of here, I do want to talk about a couple waiver guys that we missed. Uh, the first one being Paris Campbell had nine targets. He's only owned in 30% of leagues. Uh, it went six for 71. Phil Rivers loved targeting him. Some Paris Campbell 
huge fan. Uh, think he actually has some skill. And then Chase Edmonds somehow had nine touches, 45 yards, and a score. Like, you can't so be thrilled. Does, yeah. Kenyon Drake, that as a Drake sucks a little bit. Yep. So, any other hey, free man. agency guys that we missed that I missed? I don't think so. Uh, happy birthday, man. Hey, thanks. It's my birthday today. Yeah. So, that's also why we're partially filming late because. You know, we just had, you know, some friends over watching some football. So taking it all in. Yeah, it feels great that football is back. I was surprised at how high level the play was uh, for there not really being preseason games. Hopefully they permanently get rid of preseason games. Yeah. Um, But yeah, not not a lot of, I guess, not a ton of injuries, I guess. Um, No. I I think we were both expecting some more soft tissue injuries than actually occurred. Um, so it's, it's good to be back to football and Hey, like you gotta, everybody's feeling out, figuring out their team. Some people are really high after scoring a bunch of points. Some people are really low. Try to take advantage of the people that are down on their players that you think are going to outperform their value the rest of the year. And, you know, just now's the time either. Hey, you're in good shape, but never stop trying to improve your team. Um, whether it's on the waiver wire, whether it's via trade, whether it's just sitting things out if you need to, because you still believe in your guys, just always be on the lookout for, for, uh, um, that next guy that's going to take over your league, you know? Yeah. And we've talked about it at length. Um, your draft really just puts the bones in place for your team. You still have to go out and you have to make waiver adjustments. You have to really, you know, you have to be competitive. The only, the most competitive playoff teams are the ones that make regular waiver moves on a week to week basis, or the ones who, you know, save their sauce as we call it, their fab, and make that key waiver move if there's some devastating injury to a, a, a you know, a key star who has a, a a number one backup like a Chase Edmonds per se. So, you just you need to be. Don't overreact if you one week one. Don't go out there and start spending all sorts of fab thinking that you need to retool your bench because you don't. Just be conservative with it. If you did lose week one in a glorious fashion, you have all of these hurt guys, then maybe evaluate spending some fab and retooling a little bit of that so that way you're able to put a competitive product on the field in week two. Remember, it is a weekly game. It is not a season-long game. Just be cool. We're fine. I I lost week one in a lot of leagues. Alex lost. We're we're good, man. We're good. Um, yeah, we're losing. So hopefully you don't have to. That's, that's I think, why isn't... we're the sackos, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> do it. Do, do as we say, not as we do. Right. Oh, wonderful. Um, with that. I think uh, we're going to transfer to our lovely social media page. Everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, going to see if we can't get some more uh, waiver wire advice out to you guys. And uh, we'll be back on Thursday with a, another weekend preview. Thank you much. Check out our rankings, the fantasy football sackos.com. They're live and they're great. Stop sending me text messages about hey this guy or this guy look on the website it's right there (laughs) thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy football sackos podcast follow us on instagram and twitter at the ff sackos